podcast number 31 with Mr. Matt Daniels, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Are you ready, Matt? I'm ready. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much for being the show. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, dude. This is this is great. Uh, we're here again today to go for a shop. It's uh, what, uh, Wednesday morning? I think it's going to be hot day today. Yeah, high of like 97, I think. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so I want to start with a very, very serious question here right now. My, this is the most important question that if I can get an answer from you, that, you know, podcast would be so worth it. What happened to the mustache? I <laughs> 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 just kidding. I love that thing. You know, it's like, that is like your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> I'm happily married, and I'd okay. like to stay that way. <laughs> so, uh, no, you know, I I like like this past year. It's kind of been a um, a tradition where for my bigger races, I I grow out the mustache and I show up on the start line with that. And and um, you know, part of the reason is it's it's kind of been something that I've been known for. And then uh, yeah, the other part of the reason is it just helps me not take myself so seriously. And so I uh, love that. You yeah, know, after the race, you shave it off, start clean, and start a new training block. And uh, I love yeah, that. so we'll see what um, 2020 holds. I don't know if it'll be a <laughs> um, a soul patch, a beard, a mustache, or what, but it'll be something. <laughs> I have some ideas. Actually, I was thinking. Yeah, I was running yesterday, and I was like, I have some ideas. Maybe you can do because uh, like you could dye it uh, different colors. You know, um, <laughs> that could be one thing. Or maybe uh, there's this rocker in uh, Argentine rocker who used to have half of his mustache used to be white and the other half used to be I don't know, black or different colors. So that could be your thing. Well, but, be a good look, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like that because I, what, what, uh, it seems like that's your little weapon thing that, or like your thing, you know, like uh, that you use uh, uh, for those big races. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, uh, what I'm really considering is the mutton chops. So how's that? What's that? So oh. yeah, we can go uh, the big Western style mustache with some, big sideburns and <laughs> mutton chops on the side so it's funny because like <laughs> i cannot grow uh a beer and mustache so i was like and i have envy i mean plenty <laughs> you know so but no it looks good and um awesome awesome oh. and yeah it's good to it's, it's good to stay married so you know what yeah. of course <laughs> <laughs> no doubt no doubt <laughs> so um you just finished uh probably one of the biggest races ever um in your career and you're very new career as a trail and ultra runner um so western states what well, that was uh like what three weeks ago yeah maybe I think, um a little over two weeks I think. Uh, oh, yeah, two weeks so. and we'll talk more about that of course i'm super curious to learn more about um you know how it all went how you felt uh, the training uh, process that took you um um to get you ready for it um but um it's so funny i was listening to some of your interviews before and everybody was asking Oh, is the Black Canning hundred uh, K race the, the the one where you were expecting to get the golden ticket? And you were like, eh, I, I, w I wasn't what I wasn't even planning to do a hundred miler. And now it's like, yeah, let's do Western. And then you finish fourth. Like, uh, were you? And we will talk more about this. But were you surprised about you know finishing top top four? I mean, <laughs> yeah, um, I was a little you know I was surprised, and then. Um, I, it, there's a, you know, part of me that kind of expected to, um, to be up in the front and competing for a top spot, uh, because that's just the way I race. I like to yeah. go into races without, um, a whole lot of expectation, but knowing I'm fit enough to be able to compete with the best. Right. Um, but yeah, it was a dream come true to be in the top 10 <laughs> and especially find myself on the podium for most of the race. And then, you know, obviously over the last, uh, I think 40 miles that I, I faltered from third to fourth, but, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was quite the experience. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course. Um, so funny. I was just thinking. I was even thinking, I guess when you're running and doing your thing, and you see all these people who have, uh, a, you know, done the race before, and you're like, oh man, I'm already passing this guy. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to name names, but uh, <laughs> I bet that was fun, huh? Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I I went off with a real conservative start, um, and when I I think right before 50k, I found myself found myself um, just kind of running right right next to Ryan Sands who mm -hmm. uh, won the race yeah. a couple of years ago and uh, I had to really like do like a mental check like okay am I being stupid or am I running yeah. smart right now and um, a lot of the race went that way because after uh, after 50k I, I was by myself in third for the majority of the race and okay you know the whole time I was just questioning oh gosh like 
am I like, is this, is this smart or you yeah. know, what's going to happen? And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was humbling getting to be in a race with mm. that much talent this year. Yeah. Um, but it also made me excited and want to compete at a higher level. Now when you're running by yourself, um, how, 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 how's your uh, head and mind working? Like, are you push yourself like, uh, because you, you're wondering, you know, how am I doing? Like, do you keep going hard? Do you, you know, um, go steady? How, how does that work? It was a lot of everything. I think, um, for me, the biggest thing was just get from one aid station to the, to the next. And, mm. um, you know, really trying to split the race up in sections and mm. focus. I was more focused on, you know, my nutrition and staying, staying cool and mm -hmm. things like that. And so you're not really thinking a whole lot about the pace. You're just, you know, moving, moving through the mountains and, yeah. and, um, you know, running at an effort that you feel like you could sustain for, you know, all day basically. Yeah. And, um, I think, you know, having that focus on taking a gel every 30 minutes or, um, okay, I need to get to the next aid station and refill my ice buff and mm -hmm. you know, cool off and maybe drink some Coke or eat mm -hmm. some potato chips. So yeah. you're kind of thinking about that, you know, um, as you're running it rather than thinking about, okay, you know, where's everybody behind me and ahead of me. And so, oh, yeah. nice. At least for me, that's kind of how So focus went. more on yourself. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. Um, huh, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. It makes you focus on, on, on you rather than other people. Um, now for the people <coughs> who don't know you, because you know, this podcast is not like a necessarily trail running podcast is in general. Like I was telling you, interview people of different backgrounds that, you know, have the spirit of digging deep uh, and doing their best. Why don't you, uh, talk a little bit more about yourself, uh, growing up in Arlington, Texas, uh, pretty much started running since you were like 11 years old. Um, and then, you know, started running college, um, went to the Navy, you were there for a few years. And then um, I guess I'm, I'm really curious to learn more about your, your background real quick. Uh, we'd like, like, like to spend a lot of time talking about Western. Sure. <laughs> but um, what I was going to say is like, I'm just curious about, uh, do you have any first memory um, of, you know, when you were a kid running? If I would ask, you know, one of your first memories about running, is there something that um, you can think of? Yeah. Um I guess my first, you know, real memory of running and, and actually enjoying it was, uh, I was probably, I don't know, nine or 10 years old and I was in the Boy Scouts mm -hmm. and, um, we, we were at this, at this park in Texas, uh, we were going to, I think like plant grass or something in an area that grass wasn't growing or something, yeah. I, you know, something <laughs> along those lines doing a good deed. And, uh, but to get to this area, we, I remember we had to, um, hike in on this, basically it was a bike path and, and I've run hundreds of miles at this park now throughout my career growing yeah. up and going back home. But back then it was my first time at this park. And, uh, I remember we had to hike in about, um, like a mile and a half out to this area that we were going to, um, plant the grass. And we were out there and a big storm rolled in. And I remember it was just thundering and lightning and <laughs> just, it got crazy. And, uh, a couple of my buddies in, in a boy scout group and I decided to, um, run back to our cars or our parents' cars as fast as we could and race each other. And it was about a, roughly about a mile and a half. And I remember just, you know, running through the woods on this bike path and it was just pouring down rain and I just fell in love with it. I, mm. I don't know. I, I can't really describe it, but I remember the moment I got home, I went straight to my grandparents' house and told my, uh, my papa, I was like, I, I ran a mile and a half and it was <laughs> awesome. I beat everybody. And, uh, and you know, after that, it was uh, field day events and, um, you know, f finding my love for running through that and winning those field day event races. And then um, then junior high school signing up for, for cross country and track. And, yeah, and then it was a natural progression through through high school and, and college. So, And, and you were <coughs> initially focused on, on road. Is that right? Yeah, road and, road and track. Um, okay. Yeah, post-college, post um, it was definitely more focused on road. That's kind of where the money was at. And, mm. um goal was to kind of, um, eventually make an Olympic trials, uh, or, you know, get on the Olympic trials. And, um, obviously every kid's dreams to make an Olympic team and that sort of thing. So, yeah. um, yeah, I graduated, uh, college from Adam state, um, moved out here to Boulder and started training with Brad Hudson yep. and, um, found myself on the start line of the Olympic trials for the marathon 2016. How was that uh, process of, of qualifying for, for the OTQ? What marathon do you run to qualify? So I, well, so I guess I can kind of back up a little bit. When I um, joined Brad's group in 2000, 
2015, late 2015, I um, had the idea of just being um, basically staying a 5K runner and mo maybe moving up to the 10K. Okay. I had no desire to really go to the marathon just yet. I wanted to try and make the trials on the track <laughs> first. And um, Brad had uh, sent me out to San Jose to run a half marathon, more or less as a kind of a training run just kind of see what I could do maybe make some money and it went really well I mm. um so I ran 63 40 for the half that day <laughs> and um uh, was able to qualify for the Olympic trials that way so my first marathon was actually the Olympic trials <laughs> so that's insane I bec I heard that you were you were saying that uh the Olympic trials was your first marathon um just ridiculous <laughs> um how how did running so running that half marathon that may, that you know help you qualify for for the trials how, like was it a hard race for you or I'm just trying to understand how hard or you know how not very hard it was for you was it just a chill I don't want to say chill race but did you you know how yeah. was it um it, for the majority of the race I'd say you know eight to ten miles of it was surprisingly easy I found <laughs> myself just everything was just clicking you know yeah. it's one of those days where you're just in that in that flow state i i remember looking over to my left and there's meb kofleski and i'm just <laughs> like are you kidding me i'm running right next to meb in a That's half marathon awesome. and um yeah it, obviously any race at a, at a high level like that yeah. you get you know two or three miles away from the finish line you're starting to have to push a little bit and and it got tough but it it never you know i remember um i was when i finished that race i, w I actually was in like a battle with uh, a guy named Nick Hilton and mm -hmm. um, we actually, I th he out leaned me at the finish line. So <laughs> we'd run 13 miles and it came down to somebody having to out lean me. Oh. And it, it, so that little bit got a little tough. Yeah. <laughs> and like when you do those races, I bet you don't really focus on nutrition, right? Like, yeah, I had never taken a gel in my life, I think. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, funny. Point. <laughs> I always talk with the guys, you know, um, they used to work at the Boulder Running Company. You and I used to work uh, at yeah. the Boulder Running Company. And, you know, all of you guys are super fast runners. And I always ask them about their nutrition strategies. And they're like, I, nope, nothing. <laughs> I'm like, dude, <laughs> I don't know. It's just insane. And yeah, it doesn't, it, it's not that surprising. So you qualify for, for the trials. That was in 16, right? 2016, yeah. And uh, how was that, the experience of running that marathon? It was an experience. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was. Uh, Did you like specifically train for it after you qualified or were you focused on other things? And then, you know, you were also doing the, that marathon. Yeah, I did. So um, we actually had quite a few of us um, on Brad's team that, that had qualified for the trials. So um, what we did was we went out to Henderson, Nevada, just outside of, of mm -hmm. Las Vegas and did a training camp for about two months. Wow. And um yeah, so basically we went out there to kind of mimic what the weather was going to be like in L.A. and just get away from, from everything here mm -hmm. in Boulder and um, just focus on, on the marathon and, and doing a big special block for that. And uh, it went, uh, my training went amazing. I don't know if I've ever been this fit in my entire life. Mm. Um, maybe almost to the point to where it was too good, and I think that was part of the problem. I got to the starting line a little bit too too tired and oh, um, kind of maybe left my race in, in a few workouts a mm. couple weeks before. Um, but you know, that, that's kind of part of it. You learn, it was my first, first one and, uh, mm -hmm. an awesome experience. And, um, the race itself was, um, was great for 13 miles and then it was not great for 13 miles. Oh and, man. you know, it was, it was one of those days, but, um, I left it super, super bummed because I, I felt like I could have, uh, I was in shape to be like a top 10 type guy, I mm -hmm. think in the trials and, uh, Finishing in, I don't know what I was, 40th or something like that was uh, really, yeah. really disappointing at the time. Of course. And when you, um, you know, you were done with, with, um, with the race, was that around the same time that, um, this is a cool story I would like you to share with people sure. where you meet with your friend, uh, Hayden Hawks, and he kind of, you guys kind of start talking about, hey, maybe running on trails, um, or, the fact that you really, you guys didn't really enjoy running on trails and that kind of sparks your curiosity to start training more on trails. And then that kind of evolved into look at what you're doing yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, talk more about that experience of like may maybe being a little disappointed with, you know, your performance at the, at the, at the Olympic trials. And then how did that kind of evolve into uh, getting on trails? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's a really cool story actually. Um, Actually, before before the trials, uh, Hayden had just he had just graduated college, and 
he had come out to Boulder. He was looking mm. at um, groups to join, road running groups, um, and you know where he was going to go post collegiately to run. And um, and we had talked a lot about you know how much we love trail running. And I was like, oh, I still have the the trials you know to do, and I'm going to still focus on road. And um, we'll see how that goes, and then go from there. So <coughs> fast forward to the trials. Um, another really good friend of mine, Addie Bracy, who mm-hmm. was running for Coach Hudson, um, went to the training camp with me and ran the trials. She kind of left left the trials with sort of the same feeling I had a little bit of disappointment and that mm. sort of thing. So, um, after the trials, we, uh, my roommate at the time, Andy Wacker convinced, um, myself and Hayden to do the U S mountain running champs just for fun. And I was <laughs> looking for, for something totally different than the roads. I just had no desire uh-huh. to train for another marathon at the time. And yeah. So yeah, it'd be fun. Let's go out to New Hampshire and, and run. And so Hayden and I, um, went out there and uh i also in the meantime convinced daddy she was thinking about retiring from running and the trials being it oh dude and I said, that's amazing just, uh, yeah i was like just give this one one race yeah. a shot and let's let's see how it goes and so we went on a training run up up green mountain in boulder and she kicked my butt and set an fkt up that and she was like okay maybe maybe really? i'll be good at it yeah that's awesome um so we all went out there and um all four of us qualified for the world team and yeah, our, it was all over from there. We were nothing but trails ever <laughs> since then. <laughs> so how do you qualify? So you qualified for world uh, after doing this. Uh, what kind of distance in, 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 in terrain was the, the U.S.? What mountain was it? Again? So it was the U.S. Yeah. Mountain Running Champs. Okay. Yeah. New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. New Hampshire. So how the U.S. Mountain Champs work is every, every year it alternates. So one year you have um, an all uphill year. Um, mm. So the world championships will be... Uh, from start to finish, it'll be roughly 10 to 12 K straight up a mountain. Wow. Um, and then, uh, the following year, it'll be 10 to 12 K up and up and down mm-hmm. year. So, um, and they always set the U S championships to mimic what the world championships will be. So the year we went out there, it was an all uphill year. I've seen photos. That looks yeah. epic <laughs> climbing. Yeah, it Brutal. was, it was gnarly. Um, so the course in New Hampshire is at a, at a ski resort called Moon <laughs> mountain. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's a really incredible course. It's for a, a road and track guy. It's it's really um, it's pretty good. It, it's a lot of it's really fast and runnable. Um, the last one k though, you're going up a, a ski slope that's between thirty and forty percent grade, so it's steep. Oh, yeah, yeah, wow. um, yeah. And uh, we all went out there and just had the race of our lives, and uh, <laughs> found ourselves up up front and competing for a spot on the world team. How long after you finished that race uh, were the championships? Um, let's see, that race was in July, and it was actually July 4th weekend, and then oh. the World Champs was on September 11th. Oh, okay. So, yeah, cool. it, we went out to Bulgaria for that one. Yeah. It was uh, my first um, trip to Europe and uh, to race yeah. the European scene. So Nice. Yeah. And then you won a gold medal, right? Yeah, it was the first <laughs> ever... Uh, Thank you, God. <laughs> yeah. Damn. First Damn. ever uh, time that, the, that a U.S team has won gold at the mountain champs so it was really cool to be a part of that of course that's such a big deal i mean running for your country winning gold going to europe uh how was bulgaria bulgaria, <laughs> bulgaria was interesting um uh, uh-huh yeah a lot of people ask uh, uh what bulgaria was like yeah um we didn't really see i mean yeah. w- you know we saw a lot from the drive from sofia up into the mountains but the mountains of Bulgaria may be some of the most beautiful mountains I've ever been to in the world. I mean, it was it was stunning. Stuff mm. you just would never expect. Yeah. Um, the food and that sort of thing was a whole nother topic. Not <laughs> great. <laughs> Not great. Yeah. You mean they didn't have pizza? <laughs> they did. <laughs> I say that because I know how m- I know that you like pizza a lot. I, I do. I love pizza. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So okay, you're done with that, and and before we 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 keep talking about your career, so. Uh, trail and ultra runner like was there a particular moment when you realized you know what there's a more there's a better future or more opportunities for me in trails um than you know my career on on road on uh, running on roads um i never really looked at it that way when i was yeah. getting into it i i see it now definitely yeah. but um when i was getting into it it was more i was just trying to find this um feeling of passion again and, and spark mm. for running i kind of lost that over over time, um, the road scene really, really burned me out. Um, so I, you know, even when I was training on the roads, I'd find myself up on the trails doing, doing runs on the trails, you know, three or four times a week on my, what was supposed to be my easy days. And, um, 
and so I, I knew that that was a um, it was coming from a place of love and passion to, to you know be out there and enjoy that and enjoy the process of training on trails and uh, yeah I think that was kind of more what was in the, the back of my mind and then as I've kind of progressed in, in the sport and uh, definitely since I've gotten more into the ultra running scene uh, I see there's uh, definitely more um, more room for growth and, and sponsorship and um, things like that yeah I imagine because the sport is growing one and two I mean <laughs> you're incredibly you know really strong and, and I mean you're you're good so like brands they start look at you and like okay there's an opportunity here to partner with him I mean um, do you see that the sport keeps growing like um, well, what are your thoughts there yeah it, it's definitely growing and it's growing at a really rapid rate um, especially here on the west coast of, of the US I think mm. it's it's, uh, it's just blown up it's huge um, and it's you know all across the nation it's getting bigger but um, when I first started in 2016 uh, it was I feel like it was kind of like this the second boom so we had like this era where um, Anton Kapushka and um, sort of the later stages of Scott Jerick's career and mm -hmm. that sort of thing where people were really starting to show interest in in the sport of trail running and ultra running and um, and then kind of as those guys were starting to phase out we had this new era of guys coming in that were just setting records and, and running these trail races fast like you know Jim Walmsley and the Cook you know Cowboys and all those guys mm. and it's really kind of um up the popularity in the sport I feel like m there's more brands getting involved um more money is being thrown into it and I think a lot of people um you know from a non-elite standpoint want to do something that's um you know, not chasing certain time goals and standards. They, they want to do s things like see how far they can push their body mm. and um, go on these crazy adventures in the mountains and just mm. something that's not so um, competitively focused. And I think that that's a lot of the reason you see big growth in the sport. Who would you say was the first person out of this new group of runners like you who have a very strong background um, running on roads? And then, because I feel that, you're talking about people like Anton Kropitschka and Scott Jerk. Like, I feel that people from the, the group where you're part of, like, they have a very um, strong background in, in not only road running, but, like, very focused type of training, focused on speed, mm -hmm. you know, that you use that now, you know, to help you uh, not only to uh, run longer distances, but be f faster, right? Like sure. Jim, w would you say that Jim Wamsley was the First, I'm not very familiar with Jim's background, but yeah. who would you say said the tone, the trend of, you know, all these really sp uh, strong, um, fast road runners not getting onto, getting into the trail? trail scene. <coughs> um, you know, Jim's done a lot and it's been, it's been more recent, I suppose. Uh, for me, if I'm looking at, um, what really kind of jump started it, I'm, I'm looking at guys like, um, Rob Carr and mm. even Sage Sage Canada right lives out here. Um, so Rob Carr, he didn't do a whole lot on the on the roads necessarily, but uh, he comes from a background where you're in 344 in the 1500, which is equivalent of 401 mile basically oh, I on see. the track. I and um, and when he came in into ultra running, he just really set the bar high. And Sage as well, I think um, he hasn't. I mean, he hasn't done as many of the longer ultras recently as I. Uh, take that back i guess he just did comrades but um you know he, he changed the way u.s mountain running was and uh you know he went out to western and competed um against anton and those guys in, in uh like 2010 and 11 and i think those guys kind of um set the way and then mm. then he had guys like jim come in and um yeah really start to change things <laughs> yeah the first time, time i heard of <coughs> rob crawler was is this guy who just uh, had an FKT of the rim to rim to rim, I think. Yeah. And I'm like, who's this guy? And then the next time that I heard about him, yeah, he won't watch your stage. Yep. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the same thing with Jim Wamsley. I think he did a, yeah, he did a, a rim to rim to rim thing. And I'm the guy, well, he didn't win the first time. <laughs> but uh, he learned yeah. the hard way. That's something that I think is really yeah. cool about your approach. That you're like, hmm. I want to take it easy, you know, n n you know, the fact that <coughs> you get the ticket to Western States, it seems like you didn't put tons of pressure to, you know, to perform. And I mean, of course you do, but, and then, you know, y I'm, I'm sure you want to go back next year, but you're just taking your time. 
Yeah. It's, it's not that you have to win, you know. I mean, you're young and um, cool. And so, all right, so you start training, you start winning races. That's pretty cool. And then um, y y you started your ultra distance career, started running ultras. Your first ultra was the uh, Black Canyon 100. <laughs> Um, so that was my first. No, the flag line. Yeah, right? the, the flag line 50k was my first ultra, and that was. I'm gonna get the dates mixed up now, but I. Um, it was in the fall of 2017, I believe. Where is that? So it's in Bend, Oregon. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> yeah, it's it. Um, it used to be a really big race. It was um the US 50k champs for a number of years, mm. and um, yeah, it's always been competitive, and and the year I ran it, it wasn't highly competitive, um, but you have a lot of like past results to kind of compare how well you did to. Mm. And so I knew that that would be a good one to go out and run uh, relatively runnable course. Um, pretty good. Um, not, not a ton of vert, but uh, enough to kind of got it. Introduce you into the trail scene. Yeah. When you started training for, for trail running, uh, did you like stop training with Brad and then did you start self coaching or? Yeah, I am. Um, Yeah, so I wasn't I wasn't running um, with Brad anymore. He's, you know, he loves the marathon and the road stuff. <laughs> yeah. and he's a great coach, and um, I think you know, trail running is an, a new enough thing to where I was like, yeah, I'll just try and coach myself. And mm. I did that for a very short period of time. And then I had a friend, uh, Kenyon Newman, mm. who was helping me out. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then when I started getting more serious with uh, ultra distance and that sort of thing, I had uh, reached out to David. David Roach. Yeah. So, yeah. How was that, um, that, that, um, I guess, uh, process of reaching out to, like, why do you, uh, think of him as, as somebody who would, uh, you know, be a good coach? I mean, he's, and he just coaches so many people and, I mean, amazing athletes. And not only that, uh, you, c you, you can tell he's known, I guess, with his wife as well for this, um, philosophy you know of just uh enjoying what you do loving what you do um what made you think of david as a as a you know as a as a potential coach and then you uh, you know you went uh, reach out to him sure um yeah so i had gotten a in 2017 i gotten a email from david or maybe it was like a a message on facebook or something but um he just reached out and he's like hey you know it looks like uh Maybe you're not enjoying every run, enjoying the process. I, I see some of the posts on, oh. on um, Strava, and I, I just want to reach out and see, you know, make sure everything's okay. We, you know, my wife and I love following you, and we're big fans, and um, we want to see what's best for you. And um, I just thought that was awesome. And, yeah. and I was working with somebody at the time, but I was also going through a lot of life issues. Uh -huh. So maybe that was translating to how I felt about some <laughs> of my running. Um, and yeah, and that always stuck with me. And then, um, Finally, I was just like, you know what? That's the type of person I need mm -hmm. to be having communication with every day and, um, you know, helping me through the process of ultra running and trail running. And, um, yeah, so when I was ready to, to make that change and have uh, have a more, like, you know, serious coach for the sport, I uh, I reached out to him and, yeah, he was willing to, to take me on and <laughs> help me through it all. So, um, did, you, um, did you talk about specific – when you first started training with David, do you have specific goals in mind? How did that uh, all start? Yeah, I actually – I kind of went to him um, as a blank slate. I, you know, I told him I would eventually love to be able to um, to be the first sub-four-minute miler, also win a major 100. Um, uh, that's – for whatever reason, that's always been something I, I've wanted to do. It's been like a self-goal to have that incredible range and distance. And, um, and then I told him, you know, I just want to enjoy it again. Like I want to really – Um, fall back in love with the sport and I want to be able to go do a, a short mountain race and have the same amount of success as I could have in a, a 50k or something like that and um, yeah he was all for it and it's been it's been really good since then we I, I would say the biggest thing initially is he just uh, instilled this thought process um, in my head of this is going to be a long-term thing like you know, you, you're going to run great this year and next year, but five years from now is, um, you know, five, six years from now is where things are really going to happen. And, um, we got to keep that in mind right now mm. so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. And, um, yeah, that, I mean, it's, it's made a huge difference. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you start, uh, working together and, uh, was that when you decided to, um, 
target your first ultra distance? Uh, um, so I had already done uh, a 50 K right. and then yeah, I had yeah. done uh, a few like longer mountain races, but nothing over 30 K in the mm -hmm. mountains. Um, when I started working with him, we had in mind, uh, yeah, I guess to do a couple 50 Ks and I convinced him that I, I wanted to give the hundred K distance a try just to see if I liked anything longer than, than 30 <laughs> miles. And, uh, he was a little hesitant at first, I think, but he was very supportive and, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was always like, yes, you can do it, but you know, we're not going to train specifically for it. So uh, we're going to keep, keep yeah. dialed back like we would if we were still doing 50 K and that sort got of thing. It, got yeah. it. So you were initially focusing on that distance, but yeah, I'd go and, and run 60 miles and give it a try, give it a try. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so your first, um, so your first hundred K was, um, Vendera, 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 Vendera right? yes. where, uh, you didn't have a, a good time. <laughs> <laughs> basically hit your head, uh, is it against a tree or? Yeah. Yeah. I hit my head on a tree. Um, yeah, just, uh, basically to avoid, uh, another collision. Run, yeah. yeah. With another runner, I, uh, kind of went off, went off the trail a little bit. Um, and, uh, there's a kind of a low hanging tree and, it wasn't a branch. It was the full trunk. It just took <laughs> me out. <laughs> <laughs> what, is yeah. it, what, what, was it like, were you distracted or were the other runner was distracted? Uh, what do you think happened? So it, it's kind of hard without seeing. Was seeing it your full trail. man? <laughs> yeah, it could have been. I, so we we're on an out and back section, really narrow mm. single track technical trail. Yeah. And I was going downhill. Um, she was coming uphill and it, it was just like, you know, when you're going downhill in the middle of a race, you're going yeah. really fast and i was trying to put distance on second place at the time and uh, we just didn't see each other until last minute because of the tree coverage and the terrain and uh as soon as i saw her so i didn't hit her i kind of went on the embankment oh and uh, <laughs> yeah so it was nobody's fault it's just the way the course was laid out and how yeah. fast i was running at the time i think probably <laughs> so you dnf yeah. um you text your coach and you're like okay what's next and you decide to do Black Canyon because that was actually David's uh, initial pick. It was, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yep. how many months after uh, Bandera was Black Canyon? Uh, it was about a month. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I had um, about two weeks to kind of recover from the concussion and then, um, then a decent week of training and then we kind of tapered back down again. Uh, and, and Black Canyons is where? It's in Arizona. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, I just see. outside of Phoenix. So you went there with, uh, I mean, what was your, I guess your goal was again to experience the distance, mm -hmm. to get used to the distance and, and I mean, and you end up winning it and that's where you got your, um, your entry, your ticket. Uh, I like how it's called the golden ticket. Golden ticket. I <laughs> saw a photo of Addy, uh, when she got her golden ticket and it's like, it looks like this big check. It's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, Ours was a, a chocolate bar actually. Oh really? Uh, <laughs> at, at Flat Canyons. <laughs> yeah. With the golden ticket label on it. <laughs> how, how, how was the race over? Like, how was your experience running it? Um, again, I'm just curious to, to hear from you. Was it like easy ish? hard you had to dig deep a lot and how did that go yeah black canyons again it was <laughs> it was one of those races and you don't get them often you know i think before black canyons maybe a race i had like that was the half marathon where <laughs> i qualified for the trials but it, again it was another one of those races where i was just in this constant state of flow and like nothing nothing was bringing me down like i just felt amazing for almost the entire race there, you know the one low point i hit was um from basically miles like 45 to 50 i think i ran a little bit too hard i got a little excited and mm. um all i did you know i took another an extra minute at the aid station i think uh just to kind of calm down and then um and then just enjoyed the last you know 10 12 miles of the race knowing that i kind of had it in the back because it, again it was on an out and back section so you could see how far second and third was from you and mm. um but yeah it was it was amazing it was just uh Everything was clicking. Nutrition was on point, better than it's ever been. Um, yeah, the, the trails were just the, my favorite type of trails, you know, real flowy and a lot of runnable sections. And Got it. Yeah. Were you working with your current uh, nutrition uh, sponsor? I was, yeah. Okay, I was actually so at Black Canyons. Um, I was testing out some new product that's mm -hmm. going to be you launching here. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be launching here next month. And so um, for the first time I was using it, it was kind of a, a gamble, but it yeah. worked really well. Yeah. Uh, w w you were talking about being in this state of flow. 
um, I'm just curious. What do you think? Like, do you focus on something specifically? Uh, you get um, motivated by I don't know, trying to beat other runners, or you know, what is flow for you? I don't know. If this is an answer. A, yeah. An answer that's um, a question that's easy to answer. <laughs> but I'm no. just curious to see what's on your mind. Why are you doing that? Um, you know, it changes a lot throughout 100k. I found a half marathon. It was just kind of being dialed in and having that what you would call a runner's high, where you're just not really thinking about anything in mm. particular or not really feeling anything but at the 100k it was you know things were just clicking i never really had any anything going on with my muscles or heavy legs and um it was i get a time like on an out and back section where i'd make it a point to congratulate every runner going by and you know making it fun it was like a almost like a party atmosphere <laughs> on, on courses <laughs> like that where you get to see everybody and yeah um yeah it was a uh, just a lot of just like finding things to be happy and joyous about and um uh, you know being excited that i was winning a race uh, uh, that competition and that long of a race and i was running it for the first time i think a lot of that just kept me very uplifted and uh got me through the finish right yeah. of course the adrenaline and, and getting that energy from people who are like uh cheering you on and things like that right? definitely yeah for sure uh, do you like when you do these races do you listen to music or no, yeah, I've never really listened to, yeah. to music on runs or anything. I kind of, I'm old school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I do, but after a specific period of time or distance, like, um, I don't know, 50K, so, I, so that's 30 miles. Usually after mile 20, it's like, I earned my music sure. now, so <laughs> I do that. But um, yeah, everybody's got their, their thing yeah. to get them through. Or that's like, uh, I've only done 150 miler, and for me, that would be every, after, um, after completing 10 miles, I would just eat a Snicker. <laughs> Snickers yeah. Snickers. <laughs> of course, I'm not, you know, I've got to reward yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's kind of cool. All right, so you win, you win the race, and you decide to to, to go to Western. Um, talk more about how was that, um, uh, I guess, you know, your, your, your conversations with, with your coach, with David, after winning and, and thinking about going to Western, what were, what were the plans and how was your training leading up to the race? So right after, um, right after Black Canyon, um, got a congratulations text from, from David. He was super pumped and, um, and he said, whatever you do, don't accept the golden ticket just yet. Let's talk when you get back in town. And I was like, cool, totally expected that, you know, like, um, didn't, I I had it in my mind. I had no, hmm. I was <laughs> like, I, I, I know I wonder what run Western. It's a race I've always wanted to do, but I had it in my head that not this year, like just not ready for a hundred miles yet. And, uh, um, yeah. And then I met John Mettinger, who's the, um, like the president for Western States, the chair president and all that. And he said like three words to me. It just got me super pumped. pumped i was like <laughs> oh my god this is like god talking to me yeah. you know, was, um and i remember you, getting back on the plane yeah. uh to so what did he say it, it was just like you know i don't know if you've ever talked to john mettinger he has this really deep burly bear voice and mm. it's just like filled with so much passion for ultra running and the sport and he's been around western for years and um he just said something like you know it's really exciting to see you out here at the you know compete as fast as you did with these great guys and he's like we'd love to see you at western states and i just could not get the we'd love to see you out at western mm. states you know out of my head and uh the whole plane ride back i was like i can't wait to call david when I, uh. <laughs> I landed and i was like i better wait you know a day until i got called <laughs> um yeah we, we talked a little bit and um it was you know i think i i convinced him i the whole thing i, I wanted just to just experience it i didn't care if i finished uh i was barely making cutoffs or anything i just wanted to go to western to experience what it was all about mm. and uh yeah i think that we that's kind of the mindset we went in with it uh went into it with and um training we kept pretty dialed back we did a few things you know to make sure i was prepared for for yeah. it and everything or but to uh run 40 more miles yeah <laughs> yeah but that's the thing we were basically just uh you know kind of i we weren't winging it i mean David knows exactly what he's doing, but it was definitely uh, coming from a place. Yeah, I remember he told me on a training run, he's like, you know, you're not ready. I don't think we're ready for the 100 miles yet. Um, and, uh, you know, let's just go have fun with it and experience it. And 
if you drop out, you drop out. If you finish, you finish. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's <laughs> just see what happens. <laughs> what are, what other are things or different things you did to get yourself ready for Western? I mean, uh, nutrition wise, or even you know, um, in your mindset. Because again, you know, it's you finish a 60 mile race, you want it, you feel great, but man, it's still four more miles. I remember you said in an interview that you, you talk with Scott Jurek about it and he's like, yep, respect the distance, yeah. respect the distance. <laughs> so yeah. anything else that you did um, that you really helped you to, because, um, and we'll talk more about Western, but how was your experience overall in the race? Do you have like, you know, we'll have highs and lows, but how would you say it was your experience at Western overall? Like, Oh, it was, um, I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean like nutrition wise yeah. and, 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 you know, m mental, mental wise, were you always, you know, feeling good or? Yeah. For the most part, um, I guess, uh, you know, for pre preparing for it, we didn't really change much at all. Mm -hmm. Um, other than the fact that, you know, I would, I would do some long runs and focus a little bit more on nutrition and that sort of thing, but we kept it, you know, pretty chill. And uh, I think it allowed for me to be kind of ready for for anything mm. at western and um yeah i mean that 100 miles like the overall experience was amazing but you know during a 100 mile race and anybody that's run one can tell you you go through a lot of different experiences and emotions and um the nutrition was on point for 40 miles and then it was terrible for 40 mm -hmm. miles and then it was okay for you know mm -hmm. 20 more miles or whatever and um And I think that's just the way it goes. When you run that long, your body's going to reject mm. certain flavored gels or <laughs> um, things like that. And I had uh, some Achilles issues and mm. um, some little nagging injuries come up during the race and, and things like that. But overall, I'm, like as far as a mental state goes, it was, uh, it was a really good experience. Like I think anytime you can, you can get to mile 99 and be excited to come back and race it again, um, <laughs> it's a good day. So Of course. <laughs> yeah. So this is the first time that you, I guess, uh, ran with uh, Pacers and put together a crew team. How 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 was that experience? Because um, you know it's a, it's it's something new, right? They've never done before. Right? How, how yeah. was that? Oh, uh, it was awesome. I um, putting together my crew team, I, I was really trying to find you know, well, so I had my family out there who was part of the crew, which was awesome. My wife, uh, one of my my good friends, Chris, and uh, and my my parents, and they were great and then i also had um a good friend hayden hawks and mm -hmm. joshua stevens come out to help mm -hmm. and they both also paced so they paced and helped out with the crew and um putting together that team i just wanted to surround myself with amazingly positive people that i knew i enjoyed being around and enjoyed running with and mm -hmm. that were going to just uplift me when you know i was at those low points of the <laughs> yeah. and uh that they did you know it was yeah. uh you know talking to to josh he'll p you know he was th you know the crew chief if you will and he'll say i think again give us a b plus like there's things we could have done better and this and that and you know for for my first hundred i i give him an a plus like it was just a it was a great day like um everything was on point in terms of coming into the aid stations and um being taken care of and then yeah. picking them up as pacers was was amazing as well josh i feel so bad for josh or joshua because uh He picked me up at Forest Hill, which was mile 62. And um, from 62 down to the river, which was 78, was probably my lowest point. And unfortunately, that was that's part of the course that probably would have been my bread and butter. Like, it's a really fast part, a lot mm -hmm. of downhill, runnable section. And I just, that was my low point. I was in that unknown territory. I'd just fallen from third to fourth and um, had an issue with the toenail that was coming off in the middle mm -hmm. of it. And, <laughs> and so he, had, he helped, you know, battle me through that you know, that low point and then got to the river and picked up Hayden and, you know, Hayden's just a, a ball of joy to be around. Like he's, <laughs> you know, he's so much fun. And, um, yeah, so I had, you know, I had Josh probably at, at a time that was, uh, it's crucial to have him there with the ex military background like myself. Oh man. All sort right. Of We so. need to talk <laughs> about that. What yeah. is Josh telling you those low moments? Uh, you know, like I, I would say the biggest part is, he told me to really dig deep and find that mental place where I can block things out. And I haven't had to do that in a long time. And, um, and usually like, you know, if something comes up, I can usually get through it with, you know, without too much, but still had 40 more miles to run essentially. And he's just like, you know, 
not in a crazy stern way or anything, but he's like, you know, find that place. Like if, if we need to walk for just a minute until you get there, we'll, we'll do it. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I was able to come out of that. I think we were clicking off. Like we had a mile that was like close to five thirty right after he, you know, had gotten out of that. And, um, yeah, it was good. Good to have him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just trying to visualize because I, I was just wondering what kind of, uh, what kind of motivation works best for you? Is it the type of, you know, keep doing it, you're doing great, or you just get your shit together, man. Yeah. <laughs> <You> t- <laughs> On stop. <laughs> no, for sure. I, I would, it was definitely, um, I think I did well with, with both at, at mm. certain times of the race. I yeah. think at that point with Josh, I needed a little bit of a kick in the ass. And then, uh, <laughs> Good job, you know, Josh. I pick up Hayden and he just starts joking and she completely changed my mood. And mm. uh, at a point in the course where I needed that, like, relaxation because I was starting to get caught by, there's... So I guess the way the course works is at mile 78, you cross the American River. And um, this year was a boat year because the river was so full and flowing. I see. So Hayden and I get in the boat to cross the river, and I see four other runners coming on the other side. Oh, dude. And uh, I started freaking out. And then Hayden was just, like, you know, joking, making making jokes and telling me, you know, this is, this is your part of the course. It's runnable. And we're just two good friends out for a trail run today. And that's what we did for the last 20 miles. And it 20 made a big miles. difference. Yeah. Is that the uh, Chucky? I can't oh, Rocky Chucky. Rocky yeah. Chucky. Is yeah. that what is that like? Uh, is that the cra? So the river is the American. So yeah, it's the American River. Okay. And, uh, the eight stations, the Rocky Chucky. Rocky Chucky. Uh, got river it. Got crossing. it. Yeah. So, uh, were you feeling like um, when you started running with with Hayden, like better mentally, like more, like okay, I got this, or or yeah, a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was really anxious. I think I, of I told him I was like can you look back and see anybody? Like, I think I told him that, like, I don't know, gosh, probably 50 times over the last 22 <laughs> miles. And, yeah. uh, um, he was always really reassuring and, um, just positive and yeah, just, it kept me going. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it, I was definitely in a better headspace that last bit than I, I had been the 20 previous miles. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the 20 previous miles was just because a lot of stuff was going wrong for me. Uh, mm. and, Thanks to Josh, I, I was able to come out of that just in time for when Hayden picked me up. So, yeah. Now, uh, when did you know that you were going to, you know, do you feel that, okay, I got this and I'm finishing fourth. I mean, when, when you know, when, when did you realize that that was going to happen? Yeah. Um, so we got to the Pointed Rocks aid station, I think it was around mile 90, 93 or 94. Mm. And um, I just felt confident that i could even if somebody did somehow catch me right then i i was going to be able to outrun them for the next Sweet. bit of the course like i just i just felt really good i'd come out of whatever lows i had and um yeah everything was really clicking and that was probably the fastest section um one of the fastest sections of the day i think from all the runners was from that mm-hmm. that aid station to the finish it was uh yeah it was great so at that point i just i enjoyed it hayden was like you know he's like you made it you're getting to come back next year and I was also still like, well, I'm not done yet, you know, <laughs> sort of thing. And, <laughs> and he just started laughing. And it was also at a point where we had saw a bear when Hayden and I were out Whoa. there uh, for our training camp. And so he was joking. He was like, that's true. This is where we saw the bear last month. As long as it doesn't need us this time, you know, <laughs> we're good. And yeah, it was a lot of just kind of enjoying the moment and yeah. getting through it. How cool. Um, now, you run for Nike. Wh- what uh, what what model do you wear for the for the race? Uh, so I wore the Wild Horse for the race, Wild Horse 5. Um, a little yeah. extra support, huh? Yeah, I think so. I, Cushion. Um, I love the new the new Kyger and the new Trail Peg uh, that just came out, but um, I've done a lot of my training here in Boulder in the Wild Horse, and um, mainly because it, it's really rocky out here, and it's uh, yeah, yeah. a tank. It has the, the yep. rock plate and a little extra cushion, and... I just felt comfortable in that shoe. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we wore that for for the, the 100. <laughs> Talk about the experience of being reached out to, uh, but like, being invited by such a big brand like Nike. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it was quite experienced. It's really cool to see what they're, you know, they're, they're creating or have created, yeah. you know. Uh, because it seems like Nike, you know, big brand didn't have that much uh, of a presence on, on trail running. And then all of a sudden, boom, you and Chris Marco and Addy, uh, and then the new shoes look so beautiful. Yeah. I'm so bummed because I can, I have such <laughs> wide feet. I can't wear Nikes. Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> but, um, 
talk about that experience of being approached by Nike, how that whole process go, you know? Yeah, it was awesome. I, um, actually after my first ultra, the 50 K out in flag line, mm. um, they were actually out there, um, I think as a sponsor for the race. And so, uh, I, I guess they took notice of how, how I ran out in that race and they, they reached out to me about two weeks before Christmas. It was an early Christmas present for me. And, um, I was shocked because like I, other than that race, I had had a pretty terrible year. I made the world team for, for uh, long distance mountain champs, but I ran awful up mm. there at the world champs and, um, I DNF'd another race and it was just, a, it was a terrible year. And, I was shocked. I got the email and I was just like, yes, let's do it. Like mm. you know, very, very grateful. And, and, um, you know, it's every runner's dream as a little boy to be sponsored by yeah. a shoe brand like Nike of and course. to hear kind of what they were, their plans are, um, and were at the time for developing the trail team and making that a bigger brand and where it's going to be going here in the future. I got me really excited. And, mm. um, yeah, ever since I've, I've been involved, it's been like being part of a, a family, you know, you think of this big, huge corporation and uh i couldn't couldn't feel any more different <laughs> like, I mean, nice. yeah they had uh you know guys were out there at western that worked for nike and it was just like seeing your best friend it was really really a cool time yeah nice um in like as a team do you guys have specific goals like for instance um do you try to race specific races or go to you know um, i don't know different countries or or is it basically rep the brand and, you know, do it with pride and, you know, do your best that you can? Yeah. I mean, I think it's um, a little bit of both. It's always for a big race like Western, it's always a, a goal to see how many um, athletes you can have mm -hmm. representing a brand at, at a big race like that. And we were very fortunate where a lot of us Nike athletes had a, had a really good year this year and all, all qualified. And I think we had seven athletes um, running Western and seven athletes a team of, I think we have 15 or 16 athletes total. I mean, that's wow. close to half the team qualified for Western States this that's year. So, um, yeah, you know, we're never really like, um, specifically seeking out the same race or mm -hmm. anything. We, um, we, you know, we all have our own schedules and our own, own thing going on and distances we race and stuff, but <laughs> it's always fun when we can get together uh, at one race like that and yeah. show up and you know, Brittany, she was second. You know, yeah, it was a huge course. showing for Nike. And yeah. She had an unbelievable race and, um, yeah, so it, it's been fun. And yeah. like I said, it's a real family like team. We always you know, chat with each other over social media and yeah. make jokes and stuff like <laughs> that. And, you know, half the team lives here in Boulder. So it's always yeah. fun. We get together yeah. every now and then. And yeah. yeah. Addie top, uh, finished nine, right? Yeah. So yeah. Addie that's finished awesome. Nine. Yeah. It was really cool. Um, so now that you're done with Western, um, what, uh, do you know what's in your calendar for the rest of the year? Yeah, roughly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sp supposed to be going out and running Sears and all in Switzerland here in a few weeks. Mm. Um, a lot of it's going to depend on how, how my training goes this week and how recovered I feel. I'm feeling good, but I also, um, you know, I don't want to push it and overdo it. I'm not, I'm in no rush to, to come back. I'd rather so stay smart. healthy. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, Love that. And you know, what the kind of, di sorry, oh what yeah. kind of distance is the, 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 the so Sears and all is, um, 31 K in mm -hmm. the mountains in the Swiss Alps. So it's a, uh, it's a really gnarly mountain race and, um, it's loaded this year. Like I think the best of the best will be out there. And if I go out there, it'll be more, um, to enjoy the trip and get in a, a fun race. And I love Switzerland and that sort yeah. of thing. So, yeah, it sounds fine. um, I won't be, I doubt I'll be anywhere near a podium finish there this year, but, um, I don't know, man. You always <laughs> go with this mentality. Like, yeah, I'm just going to have fun. And then you end up winning. So we'll see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, random question, but I know sure. you, uh, you, you, you get married, um, relatively recently. You, you went on your honeymoon to, uh, Ireland. How was that? It was awesome. Yeah. Wow. So it was first time in Ireland and, uh, yeah, my wife and I, we've both been fortunate enough to travel a lot and, mm -hmm. uh, trying to figure out where to go for on our honeymoon was tough because we were like, well, let's go somewhere. Neither one of us mm -hmm. has had been to, and we couldn't believe neither one of us had been to Ireland. And we were like, um, the way our schedules worked, we weren't going to be able to go on our honeymoon, uh, until March. And so, um, we got married in September. So <coughs> we waited a bit and, uh, decided let's, let's go during St. Patty's day. And so <laughs> we went and, uh, experienced that. And yeah, we went all over Ireland, uh, got to see the cliffs of Moore. We were in Dublin during St. Paddy's day and, um, went to Cork and Galway and just, yeah, it was a, it was a great time, really r romantic trip. And, yeah. 
um yeah i got to enjoy a lot of a lot of good beer and good food i was so. gonna say is guinness better much better in ireland than in i always heard that when that yeah. that um it is <laughs> <laughs> i mean i know that you uh like your stouts and porters yeah. me too um so when i drink uh guinness um you know here in the u.s i'm like um it's okay but i i could use stronger flavors sure um a more rich type of texture and because i love like imperial russian stouts like yeah. that's yeah, yeah. my favorite thing right <laughs> so i'm like when i take drink that and then i go to a guinness i'm like oh man not the same <laughs> yeah <laughs> like this is like a diluted yeah um but i've heard that uh guinness in uh in ireland is definitely different more rich w what would you say it, it has it's more um creamy mm. I, i would say okay it's, And I don't know if that's, you know, because here a lot of times we're drinking Guinness out of a, you know, out of the can yep. or it's being poured from the can. It has kind of that metallic taste almost to mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. in Ireland, it's just, it's on tap everywhere. And it's, ah, uh, it's, it was, <laughs> it was good. I mean, a lot of it, you know, could just be in my head because I was in Ireland and I of wanted course. to enjoy it. St. Yeah. Patty's Day and I'd yeah. already had enough to drink. So <laughs> the Guinness probably tasted all right. But, um, yeah, we, we got, we went and got to go on a tour at the, at the, um, yeah. Guinness brewery and all that. Nice. And it was It was really cool, yeah. But it it tasted good. <laughs> so let's talk about beer. Um, yeah. What um, any favorite brands that you that you like? Oh gosh. Um, let's talk about stouts and like dark beers first. Yeah, I like. I really like just trying all different mm. different kinds. If I'm, uh, yeah, if I'm, you know, I get to travel a lot, so I'm always trying new stouts yeah. and, and porters and things like that at places. I. To be honest, nothing beats Stout Month here in Boulder. Dude, <laughs> totally. Um, so for people who are not familiar, talk yeah. about st what's Stout Month. Yeah, so Stout <laughs> Month, every Feb February, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, every February, um, Mountain Sun Breweries, and they have multiple different you know locations under the sun and that sort of thing. Here in Boulder, have Stout Month where they, they brew their own stouts. And, uh, s I mean, it, it's... Uh, not uncommon to have, I think sometimes they'll have six or seven different stouts on tap. And, uh, so yeah, it's a big thing. It's almost impossible to get a seat. Luckily I live across the street from, uh, one of the breweries here in Boulder. Oh, so, really? Uh, we'll <laughs> That's go, dangerous. Yeah, we'll, it's awesome. But <laughs> yeah, we'll go when the doors open and, uh, <laughs> it'll be snowing outside and you go in and get a nice dark stout. That is so great yeah, because fun, you don't so. have to drive. Exactly. Are you kidding me? Oh, <laughs> we used to live in, when we were in Boulder, we used to live really close to Avery. Oh, nice. So yeah. three blocks from Avery. So yeah, it's very convenient. Um, and yeah, Stout Month. I think my, my favorite stout from Stout Month's always been, because I like the name, um, I think it's called Optimus Prime or Megatron. Oh yeah, that's so good. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's so good. Um, I'm a big fan of Imperial Russian Stouts. Uh, I, I, well, now it's kind of we're in the middle of the summer, so I've not been drinking a lot, but My my favorite porter is probably Victory at Sea. Um okay, yeah. by um what is this West Coast? Um Oh man, I forgot the name of the brand. The the company that makes uh sculpting IPA that's really popular, San Diego beer. I'll send you the link. You I, I think you like okay. it. And and for Imperial Russian or Stouts, um the Tsar. This is Avery a beer from Avery that I I don't think is around anymore, but um And yeah, all kinds of kinds of brands. That yeah, it's just so hard. You can't, yeah, it's almost impossible to narrow it down. <laughs> so no, no IPAs, huh? I'm, oh man, I am not an IPA guy. Yeah. I've tried. Uh, <laughs> and being in Boulder, it's like you. I mean, you're almost forced to. Yeah. To try <laughs> and. Uh, man, I'm just not an IPA guy. Yeah. Don't what like ultra runner? <laughs> I know. Doesn't drink it. What? It's I so like funny. my stouts and porters. <laughs> and you're a shiner, huh? I I do love shiner. I'm a Texas boy. Yeah, heart, of course, so of course. Gotta drink a shiner. <laughs> <laughs> You've done your research. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, when you talk about beers, like ding ding ding. I know. Um, yeah, I love I love IPAs. We um, uh, yeah, it's uh, I mean, all kinds of beer. But how about Belgium? Belgian beers. Ah, uh, you know, same yeah. thing. I I like my um. German yeah. lagers and pilsners and that sort of thing. Not a big, uh, you know, I, I guess I like to try everything. I just stay away from, from my PAs. Um, I've ha recently, I, I, I've never had a sour before. Can you believe mm. it? And then recently I, I had, um, just in the last month, I've had like my first two sours and they're interesting. They're okay. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, it's not something I can sit around and drink like a, a porter or a stout, but for sure. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember which one or where it was, was the, it? Uh, I was at Avery. I can't remember oh, which dude. One. Um, oh, that's probably. I, I don't drink sours a lot, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't know much about sours to be honest. Yeah. But uh, that Avery one, the. I can't even remember the name of it. <laughs> oh, it's so tasty. It tastes like pickle juice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It has a very particular flavor, but uh, I like it. It's really good. And I think they're. That's one of their beers no, these days. You know, they're known for that. Yeah. Oh, man. Dude. I'd say, you know, it's summertime, and in the summer, I uh, I love my Sufferfest beers. They're just, they go down so easy, nice and cool. And I was just going to say, I've never tried Sufferfest. Um, how different is, is, is Sufferfest than your typical, your regular beer? Is it like a gluten-free type? Of it is, yeah. Okay. It's a gluten-free okay. um, gl- gl- or gluten-removed Okay. Beer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're typically a little bit lower in alcohol content, but they're just so refreshing and good. Yeah, yeah. especially you, right? I have to You're be careful with that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, especially now that it's so hot. Like, sometimes I find myself like, oh, I want to have a beer, and I feel that earn it. So, but sure. it be, but just because it's so hot that you like, you just want to drink. You know, that's one of the reasons why I gain like I don't know, <laughs> so many extra pounds. But I'm uh, working on it. Addy is uh, helping me on that. Oh, um, <laughs> dude, this has been so much fun. Yeah, I appreciate you coming to the show. Um, talking more about your experiences. Um, wishing you all the best. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have to do this again. Uh, if not, you know, later in the year, next year, when you win Western. For sure. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, all Matt. Right, thank oh, you. Uh, no, and before we, oh. uh, you know, before we 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 finish the show, so, sorry. Where can people find you online, oh, social yeah. media, um, so and you, your website as well? Yeah, so you can um, find me on Instagram. It's uh, at MattDaniels480. Um, same thing, I think, Facebook, Strava, Twitter. Um, and then um, my email is MattDaniels480 at gmail.com. So anybody's, you're always welcome to shoot me an email if you have any questions or want to talk about life, running, anything. Mm-hmm. Really. I'm always always Love open that. to chat. Uh, and then uh, my website is uh, www.mattdanielsrunclub.com and that's uh, my coaching website, but you can also always reach out to me through that. Um, so I'm always taking on new athletes, so if anybody's ever interested, All right. just talk and training. Yeah. If you want to learn how to run sub four. <laughs> Or hundred miles, uh, hundred yeah. miles, baby. <laughs> From four, that's sh- that should you should create it like a new like trend slash package. Is that you want to run south four and hundred miles? <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah, there we go. All right, man. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Okay, bye. Right.